Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. It is a very special day for us here. We've got a special guest in studio, and we are, as always, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome in. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi, and we are joined by author and also Hockey Hall of Famer and Blackhawk legend Marion Hosa. Marion, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Nice to of be course. here. Of course. So Sunday's the big day. Your number is going up to the rafters at the United Center forever. Did you ever imagine when you signed here in 2009 that this could be something that, that would happen for you in your career? Never crossed my mind. Never. Uh, my goal when I joined the Chicago Blackhawks uh, was uh, I was hoping for one Stanley Cup. And uh, that was my goal. And that was my dream. I didn't play hockey to go to be Hall of Famer. I didn't play hockey to get my number retired. Uh, you know, strictly my goal was to win a Stanley Cup and everything after just follow. You know, uh, I tried to play my best uh, for the team and uh, we had the special years here in Chicago. I enjoy so much. People were great to me since day one until today. And I just enjoyed my family, enjoyed it so much here. And, uh, you know, I'm a lucky guy. You mentioned in your book how you don't cry very often. Do you think uh, Sunday you might shed a tear or two as you see that banner go up? Uh, more accurate, I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't cry. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm afraid, you know, Sunday could change. And uh, I hope, you know, but we'll see. Uh, I thought I'm going to do it in Hall of Fame speech. It didn't happen. Uh, so we'll see, you know, what's going to happen in, on the November 20th. Uh, my wife told me, you are like a rock, uh, and I wish sometimes I would be crying, you know. I had the, my best buddy funeral, Pablo Dimitra, when the play went down, and everybody was crying. I tried to cry so bad, you know, and it just didn't happen. I don't know why. So, uh, I, for some reason, you know, the tears doesn't go. So, obviously, I feel sad. I feel uh, like uh, happiness. I feel the emotions, but, you know, just they don't go through my eyes. Mm. And uh, But I hope it's changed, you know, on the November 20th. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there. Uh, if it's if it's not uh, if it's not for you, I'm sure there'll be some people that will feel that that emotion for you. And um, you know, when when you come back to Chicago, and and when you were here, how much do you did you feel the the, the love of the fan base for you? Because even since you've been retired, there are people that still say, "Oh, man, if Marion Hosa was still here, you know, kind of thing like like that that kind of you know love from the fan base. How how did you feel that as you were playing and and still feel it now? So uh, last year when I came here after I think three or four years for for the first time to sign a one day contract, I you know I was welcome. I I felt it right away. People saw me on the streets. You know uh, they shook my hand. And it's been like a while. And now I get back again, uh, you know, a bunch of like half a year later. And I feel uh, even more welcome. And, uh, you know, I'm just so thankful, you know. I'm, you know, sometimes I'm like thanking God for everything because people are so nice to me here. And, uh, you know, just nice to be back in a city. Uh, it's special to my heart. Uh, I had the most, most success uh, during my career. My daughter was born here. So definitely this place uh, meant so much to me. And, uh, it was cool because the other day my wife took my daughter right in front of the Northwestern, took a picture, and it was her ninth birthday. On the ninth birthday, they went there, and just great memories because she was born there. So it's oh, amazing. Nice. nice. We look back at the summer 2009, and I was a season ticket holder at the time, and when you signed here, things changed. Blackhawks meant business. This is it. Final piece of the puzzle. What was it back in 2009 that was so attractive to sign with the Blackhawks? So uh, when I was uh, in 2008 in the Red Wing uniform, I saw we were facing a uh, young uh, Blackhawks team and uh, I saw like lots of uh, future in that team. Uh, there was like pieces. You could tell there's coming up superstars, you know, so stars around the team and uh, just uh, great coaching staff. And I, I like that team when we play against them. You know, we beat them pretty much, uh, you know, lots of times yeah, we know. on occasions. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We, we, we <laughs> but, saw it. But so. they started getting better. And um, it, it was like so, to me, that was like really sympathetic, you know, like uh, 
how how they play, how they and where they're getting. You know, that was uh, that was the thing. And uh, when I have an opportunity as a free agent to to sign somewhere, there was a couple choices, but definitely Chicago was the the hottest place where I want to end up, and uh, that's where I sign. Well, big part of your book, you talk about your one year in Detroit, and I'm not sure if people really know all the details of how that went down. You had multi-year offers from other teams, Pittsburgh, Edmonton, uh, were the ones listed in the book. I'm sure there were others as well. Um, you actually took less money to play for a year in Detroit, and you wanted to learn from the best. You wanted to be around Datsuk and Zetterberg and Chelios and all those players. What is it that you learned in that one year that really elevated your game, do you think? So that uh, year, uh, I, I was I, I was having offer from Pittsburgh for five years, uh, you know, really big money playing with Sidney Crosby, and at the time, you know, young captain, superstar already. Uh, we had success in the playoffs. We just came short against Detroit, and uh, for some reason, I had a tunnel vision to go to Detroit. Uh, I was fascinated by the team. How come so they so good? You know. Uh, they were like Chicago Bulls, you know, when they're prime, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to go to the dressing room and find out what the secret sauce is. Why are they so good? <laughs> what make them on an everyday basis so good? So I want to go there to be a better hockey player. And I wasn't sure if I just going to go for a year or longer. But even that year, you know, I knew I can make myself a better player to learn from those guys, see how they handle certain situation after a bad stretch or a great stretches up and downs and what I do after practices after work you know if they work even harder and I learned there is another level of professionalism and I took it from that dressing room or when I signed to Chicago to the Blackhawks dressing room and I trust I, I wasn't talking much you know I wasn't a vocal guy but I think the guys saw something different in me and they tried to you know maybe grab a little piece to be better too and uh, you know it worked out well. One of my favorite stories from the book is your first impression of your Blackhawks teammates is the Blackhawks convention. And you walk into a hotel room and there's young players jumping on the bed and throwing things out the window <laughs> and acting like 19 and 20 year olds act. Did you take some of what you learned in Detroit? And I know you, like you said, just said, you're not the most vocal leader in the world, but just show people this is how a professional does things. And what you learned in Detroit, you took here. And I think, do you think a lot of the young players on the team got that from you, what you got from Detroit? I, I think just like me, you know, Nicholas Lindstrom or Chris Chelios, who wasn't talking as much too, but I was studying them, you know, how mm -hmm. they reacted and thing and uh, what they do after games, uh, the working out. Uh, so all the positives and I tried to take it. And I'm sure like, you know, I did the same thing and some younger guys watched me to do it. So I think... Uh, they get something out of it. And uh, yeah, there was uh, in a convention when I joined the team uh, with Thomas Kopetsky uh, in 2009, we came to the convention and uh, from Detroit, where there is like, you walk into the family room, there is wives with three, four kids, there's kids everywhere. And you fast forward a year later, you go to Blackhawks dressing room, just young girlfriends, not even one baby <laughs> in the room, you know, just, just empty. And uh, then you go to the room and the convention and there's guys jumping up and down the bed, open up the window, throwing stuff out of the window. And it's like, I look at the copy, it's like, this is, like, what is this? This is like junior team, you know? Like, but I love it, you know? That guy's like, you have so much energy, so much joy. And we transformed that joy and the energy on the ice. And we were having fun off the ice and on the ice. Sometimes more than maybe in first years than we should <laughs> off the ice. But, uh, you know, we learn how to be professional and we transform it and right away you know it worked out the the two guys that are still on the team patrick kane and jonathan taste from the time that you were uh playing with them what was it like to you know play with them when they were very young in their career and then kind of see them grow as hockey players uh, through the time that you guys played together and then to see them now kind of in the situation they're in where we don't really know, know exactly what their future holds. Uh, so as I was talking, uh, you knew these two guys are special, you know. Uh, they won so many games for us. Uh, when the time were tough or crucial, they find a way to take it to another level. And they were the key elements, uh, the key moments, you know, 
in a certain games and they took us to the extra step and you need these superstars you know to be successful in your team uh and those guys show up every time when we need them so uh when they were young you know you can tell uh, i was writing in a book you know like there was one game when things didn't go right and i was playing with them and they came to the bench and they were yelling at each other like pass the puck and i was like no shut up you pass the puck you know <laughs> He's like, I was looking left and right, and they were <laughs> sitting on the one side, and and I was like, it's like, you know, this is ridiculous, you know, it's fun, but you know, you can tell like those guys have so much passion for it, right? They meant it good, you know. They just were getting too frustrated, but I know what they meant, you know. They want to do the best, and they uh, they were frustrated because it didn't work out all the time. But you know, I think they learn to be patient with certain things, and especially like Johnny, you know, his captain series. Uh, he tried to do everything right, uh, try to be example for everybody. But, uh, you know, no, no, not everybody's at his level. I tried to explain to him, you know, some guys, you know, it's going to take a little bit more time than you because you are talented, you know, like Kainer. Some guys, you know, need more time to get to that level. And uh, he started understanding, you know, certain things a little bit later. He started uh, being more patient with certain things and, uh, you know, he became an even better leader. You're the first of that group to go in the Hall of Fame. Your number retired. You're not going to be the last. There's a lot of guys that are going to be joining you. We know all the superstars you played with. Who are who's the one guy or maybe a couple of guys on those cup-winning teams that you don't think gets enough credit? Like not the superstar, but that guy that you probably don't win a cup without. Well, in all three, if I have to say, uh, there is one guy. I think uh, you know. And I'll let you know his name uh, in one minute. Uh, we had like Duncan Keith, you know, uh, Norris Trophy winner, unbelievable defenseman, uh, Brent Seabrook. On the forward, you have Patrick Sharp. Uh, you, you had obviously Kane Taves, right? So uh, it's just amazing. And one guy who didn't get the credit is Nicholas Hamillerson. You know, that guy uh, was blocking machine, you know, just tough blocking machine guy. And uh, he was quiet too, and he just went under the radar. And I think, you know, he was the strong element for the all three teams. So we won the cup. Uh, so I definitely, that's the guy. Still should have had that goal against Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems they took that credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks God. Yeah. See, the only time we saw him really be emotional was when that goal was disallowed. Um, and that brings me to one of the few times we saw you really celebrate on the ice and all you have to say to a Blackhawk fan is Nashville game five and everyone nods and smiles because that's such a that's such a wonderful memory for people and we saw you really you know get down on two knees and and pump your arms in celebration talk through you know from the major penalty you're sitting in the box until that goal goes in the net what's going through your mind in that situation <laughs> So uh, we were down by, by one goal, and uh, you know Joel sent us there to score, uh, and uh, you know we dumped the puck, and I was you know like my eyes were just were at the puck, and I, I you guys know myself I wasn't like the guy who was sitting in the penalty box too much, so I tried to you know just uh, go for it, and uh, I think the guy you know put uh, himself in a bad position, and uh, you know I just tried to get a puck, and uh, you know he fell head first in the boards and didn't look good obviously but I don't think that was that bad but uh, I got a five minutes penalty and I couldn't believe it like at the crucial time five minutes penalty game uh, that was game five I was like deciding game be pretty much you know get you advantage for the next game you can close the series or disadvantage you know it's a big difference when it's for 2-2 so I was sitting in a penalty box and I was just you know I was like Wow, well, like what's gonna happen here? You know, two losses uh, already behind me in, uh, in the two finals. Now I'm in the five minutes penalty box. I don't feel pretty good, right? So uh, thanks God, uh, Patrick Kane scoring uh, goal. I think minute left uh, when we pulled the goalie to tie the game, but that wasn't over. You know, there was like still overtime, and they have Chef Weber with a huge shot. So I was just <coughs> excuse me. I was going to the dressing room. And uh, in the dressing room, guys were talking, you know, make a strategy for the penalty kill. And I'm sitting there in a, in a corner on my stall and just praying, you know, don't score, you know, just, you know, save it, you know, extra minute. So the guys did an excellent job, killed the penalty, jump on the ice, puck just came to me and, uh, you know, we scored. It came to you so perfectly. 
can you remember, you know, it, it, you had to sort of, I, I bet it almost felt like slow motion when you see that puck just sitting there and your stick is right on it. It's almost like, oh my gosh, I don't make a mistake. And you, you were able to elevate it a little bit. It just, it, it came to you perfectly. And, and that release you had of all that stress in the penalty box, and you said you're praying <laughs> that they don't score, and then you get the game winner. We had never seen you celebrate like that before. And it's been made into a bobblehead. It is the most frequently played Marion Hosa highlight. Uh, it's just, it, was so, it was so special for Hawks fans to, I mean, that moment in general, but to see you really let loose on the ice. Because we, everyone sort of thought of you that way as this really serious you know, it doesn't show a lot of emotion. And to see you have the same feeling that we all had in that moment, I think it, I think it connected you to Hawks fans a lot. That, that particular emotional outburst was everybody watching that game had the same feeling, you know? Yeah, that was, that was like, you, you're, you're right, because I score, you know, a bunch of goals in the league, and uh, I never celebrated like that. Never, ever. I don't remember that. That was only one time, and uh, one time only. And... <laughs> And uh, I don't know what went through my mind, but I think uh, all the emotions from the penalty box, from the stress, uh, from the praying, you know, in the dressing room, and all of a sudden, I think the God heard me, you know, and the uh, lucky bounce to my stick, and I just have to make sure I just elevate the puck a little bit, shovel it at the net, and then I don't know what I was doing, celebrating like that, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was special. Well, we probably have. A million questions you know hey do you remember when you did this remember when you did that <laughs> but you know the book is out it's it's tremendous your stories with scott powers who, who we're friendly with does it did a great job putting it together what was you know the the, the inspiration the motivation to, to put that book together well uh there was a time uh when we won the first Stanley cup in 2010 uh bunch of people came up to me, it's like, you should write a book, you've got an interesting story. And I was like, write a book, you know, it's like, I got 10 years on my contract, I want to play <laughs> hockey, I want to write a book. <laughs> so uh, I keep telling them that, and uh, it's like, no, this is not the time, you know. And uh, I, maybe I have an interesting story, at the time I didn't know, like, you know, I knew I lost two, one third one, you know, pretty cool, but uh, I wasn't ready for it. And uh, the time came when uh, I was... I was uh, at home already in Slovakia, so I stopped playing hockey because of my skin issue. And uh, I started telling my agent, I said, I think this is the time, you know, I want to maybe connect more with the fans, you know, in Chicago. I had in something interesting to say. I was a pretty private person. Uh, lots of people know me just on the ice. They don't know me off the ice. And I like to maybe share some uh, stories with them. And uh, also my two daughters, uh, they grew up in Chicago, and they are, you know, now 11 and 9, so they don't remember as much when I was playing, a little bit. And now my third daughter was born, and she's only two months old. And I want to leave something behind when they're older. They can grab the book, and uh, they're going to say, uh, this is our dad, you know. So that's why I write the book. That's, that's great. And uh, it, it's – I, I like that you told the story about, you know, you're taking your daughter to the hospital and, and your connections to the city. It's – it's it's special and congratulations on on your new daughter and, and you know you. reading the book, I think we all had an idea of what you were dealing with with the skin condition, um, but in the book you really get into the details of it, and I can't imagine how frustrating that was to you knowing that you still had four years on your contract, probably four years of really effective hockey left, and your body just wouldn't allow you to continue. Uh, you know, when you came to that decision, what, how were you feeling? Were you frustrated? Were you at peace? When the decision finally came, when you said, I just can't do this anymore, how did you feel? So I never had the skin problems in my life. Uh, and, uh, uh, it started, uh, obviously, when I stopped playing. I think I was around 37 years old. And uh, four years before, it started showing on my skin when I was sweating. Uh, in equipment uh, summers were clean you know like i working out in a t-shirt no never had a problem i came to the uh training camp and they started having like heavy practices on the ice then uh, there is a games there is another game there is back to back you know there is practice after practice all of a sudden i started seeing on myself i start itching it you know and start getting uncomfortable but you know first couple of years you can handle it and uh, it was okay then uh you know another two years was getting worse and worse and 2016 uh, in Toronto World Cup, 
I came clean, totally different environment and uh, totally different people. And they started seeing uh, the trainers on my body, you know, the skin issues, like, what's that? Also, it's like, well, I have a problem with this. And, and uh, there's like totally different group of people than Blackhawks trainers, right? So before the final game, uh, we make it as a team Europe to the finals. We try to play Canada, try to go for dinner with the guys, but like I couldn't, like my, my, my clothes were dirty from the leaking, you know, from mm -hmm. the, the wounds. And I just felt like terrible. I said, no, I need to order just room service. And I'm just taking pictures, sending to Chicago to the trainers. They were like, oh my God, the, the season even haven't started. You already have these problems. So I came to Chicago. We went to the specialist, you know, already, I don't know how many times prior uh, years before. And uh, they put me on those uh, heavy pills to kind of, you know, pushing it down a little bit so uh, I could play hockey. And I knew I couldn't, you know, probably do it year after year to keep going. And every two weeks I have to visit the Northwestern Hospital to go to take my blood to check if doesn't, these pills doesn't mm -hmm. affect different organs. So and so and so on, and I, after last game in Nashville, I, I came home and I, uh, I really reconsidered this because I cannot picture eating pills and playing hockey for another four years because, you know, I don't know what kind of side effect this pills going to have on me when I'm 45, 50 year old. Mm -hmm. So the National Hockey League uh, told me like, you cannot just, you know, end up like this, you know, you have to go to see an independent doctor. And I was like, I don't have a problem too, because I know like, I would like to play, but I can't play this way. So I'm writing lots about in this book, you know, about the certain situation. I went pretty deeply to the details in the book. And uh, so people, when I was leaving, they didn't understand like what was going on, and especially the opponents were like, uh, you know, really not happy uh, how this ended up. They thought there was a salary cup, uh, you know, fraud or <laughs> things like that. Right. But I understand them because they, sh they, you know, how, how, how they could know, right? Like, uh, we didn't talk about it. So, but in the book, it's openly, and Mike Terry already, uh, our doctor, talking about it also, too. Uh, so, uh, I just want to, one chapter dedicated to the skin problems, why I end up, uh, you know, and finish my career. Do you think you could still play right now? If it wasn't for the skin condition? Uh, probably I couldn't, uh, I would be stepped behind uh, with this speed of the guys uh, these <laughs> days. But uh, with my hockey IQ, uh, I probably could play fourth line. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be willing to. I'd be willing to give you a shot. Yeah, yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think you can make it work. Uh, one of my favorite stories in the book is uh, your story about your slap shot shootout shot and how that has a connection to your dad. What What, what was the story behind that? Yeah. So there was uh, when my dad was a hockey player. Uh, there was a year I forget what what year it was, uh, but. Uh, the last two teams in uh, Czechoslovak League uh, playing for the who going division down. And in the history of my team, it never happened. And they were like on the borderline, right, with the Czech team. And they had like exactly when they finished the season, exactly same points, exactly same score, exactly same wins. So the government or whoever decide, you need to play decide the game, you know, against each other. Like, you know, it's like a, so out of blue, they picked different city, you know, like the... City like not from one yeah, team neutral, or the other, neutral, yeah. neutral yeah. yeah. And uh, obviously, of course, the game went to the you know overtime uh, and uh, tie game overtime and uh, shootouts. My dad scored like one goal a season, you know. So <laughs> he's like stay home defenseman, blocking shots, you know, tough guy. And everybody went pretty much, and he was like one of the last guys on the bench. So obviously that was his turn. Otherwise, the goalie would have to go right, second goalie. <laughs> so that picked my dad in front of the goalie. And uh, everybody tried to make, and back then they didn't shovel the ice, right? So I can imagine how much snow was on the ice already. And every time uh, that somebody tried to dig the goalie and puck bounce, so, so he said, like, I just went for a slap shot. And he just grabbed the puck from the red line. And between the red line and blue line, he took a slapper. Like, who does that <laughs> with a wooden stick? And the goalie, I think he was like, you know, like shoveling the snow and he wasn't expecting the shot from there. And he just beat him low, I think, laugh. And at first, I didn't believe him. I said, that's not true, you know. And he got <laughs> upset at me. And I was like, well, I'm telling you the truth. So I asked the old, my coaches, you know, and I asked, him about, I asked them about this game. And they were like, no, that's right. That was like the legendary goal by your dad. Like, take a slapper before the blue line. <laughs> I was like, who does that, right? And that's, I, I mean, one way it's amazing. Right. And the deciding game, he scored like that. And that goal was legendary, yeah. 
So then you wanted to do that in in a in a shootout then yourself then kind of oh, you know yeah but keep the tradition way closer <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> even with today's and, things you know <laughs> and not with a wooden stick yeah. um, we have a lot of people in the chat just sharing their uh, love for you Marion uh, but Windy City Hockey our friend uh, paid eighteen dollars and eighty one cents to send his thoughts to you he says Marion you are my favorite all time hockey player so I want to say this congrats on the Hall of Fame and Jersey retirement. Also, I have a Jersey, Trenchin, Ottawa, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Detroit, and, of course, Chicago. You are a true great, and I know he speaks for uh, a lot of Hawks fans. Uh, Greg sort of alluded to it, too. Um, when you signed here, we couldn't believe it because you mentioned in your book how dead hockey was in Chicago, and we had seen the organization walk away from Chelios and Roenick and Amante and Belfour and all these great star players over money. So when the Blackhawks decided that they were going to go get the premier free agent available, we all said, oh, my God, it can actually happen. The first Stanley Cup can happen since 1961, and you were the final piece of that puzzle, and three cups later, uh, your number's going up. And honestly, like, there's a lot of guys in that team that deserve it, but the symbolism of you coming to Chicago means a lot to the people here. And I don't know if you even realize how – I, I think it's, it's almost one of those moments where you can ask Hawk fans, where were you when you learned that Hosa signed here? And everybody can tell you. you know, so I don't know if you realize that, but it was a huge, huge moment of it felt like an arrival for Hawks fans who had suffered through losing year after losing year. Marion Hosa chose us, and that feeling was, and it was incredible, and we knew – this is it. This it can it can finally happen. So I think I can speak on behalf of all Blackhawks fans and say thank you uh, for signing one year in Detroit, which is crazy to say because <laughs> when you signed in Detroit, we were all mad. <laughs> but then a year later, you come here and it's it, it, it's and you made history here. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys. I I I think. Uh well, first of all, that's a great jersey collection. Uh, yeah. guy, you know, uh, when I look at it, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I feel so great in this town. I, every time I land here, I just feel like I, I'm home, and I just feel it from the people. And I want to thank them this way, and I want to say hi to them uh, through you guys. Uh, and they mean so much to me and my family, and uh, how they are. You know, it's almost, it's almost like. No, that wasn't just me. That was like the whole group of guys, and I'm taking right now the credit. I don't feel <laughs> fair, you know, towards the other guys because, like, you know, there was not just me to win the Stanley Cup. There was like the whole team for those years, 2010, 13, and 15. And I just feel right now I am getting all the credit, and uh, you know, I don't feel good that way. But uh, you know, I really appreciate it. That means so much. Well, it's it's a little bit different because you chose to come here. Taze was drafted, Kane was drafted, Keith, Zebra, Crawford were all drafted, and they're happy to be here, of course. But you said, I choose Chicago. And I think that's why it feels different. And when we have these discussions about the greatest free agent signing in Chicago sports history, it's you. And I don't think there's much argument about anybody else. The, the only other argument we, would be John Lester for the Cubs, who won a World Series. But last time I checked, three is more than one. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you're the winner. And before we let you go, Marion, there's a little thing in your book that stood out to me, and it's something we talk about a lot: the Selkie Trophy, and how it has become an award for just centers. Um, there, I, there was a little note in there that said you, the, the one thing you didn't accomplish in your career is that individual trophy. Do you want to send a message to the league and say, <laughs> "Hey, start thinking about wingers for the Selkie <laughs> Trophy"? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. There are so many great centermen in the league, and uh, I get it, you know. Uh, there was, like, uh, stuff to compete against them. And I swear to God, like, one one year, I, I think I went to Joel, Joel Quenville, and I said, like, Joel, you know, I'm I going to work on my on my face-off so because, <laughs> because I just feel like, you know, I can be contender for the you know selkie and i i try to play defensive game back check and i i love that it's not like i i have to do it i wanted to do it and i enjoyed it uh, stealing pucks but uh, for some reason you know uh, you know in the big picture there is like all first three four five guys centermans so i started working on my draws but obviously playing with johnny taves it didn't work out because he won on every draw <laughs> and i you know i was the, just never yeah. get a chance because he was so good in it so uh 
You know, it's tough for uh, wingers uh, to battle for the Selkie, I think. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. And uh, uh, it's tough, tough to battle. But uh, uh, one, uh, my first year, uh, too bad I was hurt uh, as for the Rocky of the Year. I finished second and I only played half a year. I just felt like if I would be healthy since the you know, game one, I could uh, win that and I would have an award. Uh, but you know we don't play for could of should of would of. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is what it is, and uh, I'm okay with that. Well, well if Patrick should, uh, Kane can play center. You can. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. If Patrick Kane can play center, you can play center. <laughs> yeah, but we had fun. You know, we talk about. Yeah. I was uh, with Kaner yesterday. We were doing one photo shoot uh, together with a bunch of guys. And uh, Kainer telling me, it's like, you remember that game in Ottawa? I was like, I knew right away what he meant. Uh, he was the center man. I was playing the wing. And he's like, that was the most fun game I had. And, and the funny part is on that, uh, when he mentioned it, I, I know, I remember totally that game. We had, like, we had the puck on the string. We were passing back and forth. And we ended up with zero points, both of us. And we had so much fun. <laughs> and, you know, like, when Kainer is ending up with zero points he's usually like not happy and frustrated <laughs> and he was smiling and we smile about this game till today that's, that's awesome well if they if they do have a uh, defensive winger uh, award i i would vote that uh, it would be called the hosa award <laughs> absolutely 100 we'll, we'll write a we'll write a carefully worded letter to the league i, I guess I you're just gonna have to settle for greatest free agent signing in chicago history hey, that sounds good to me guys <laughs> <laughs> well marion thanks for doing this we could talk to you for hours i know you don't have time and you said as you were coming in you're losing your voice from doing so many of these but uh the people love to see you i think you saw that last night at the bookstore i saw the video on your instagram of just the lines wrapped around the the aisles in the bookstore and uh, i hope you're feeling the love this week because oh my god yeah that, that was uh, that was crazy i couldn't believe it and I actually, that was so warm in that bookstore and uh, I need to just, uh, I said, guys, give me one minute. I just need to walk outside to get some fresh air. And I went and walked through the people and I was like saying hi, everybody. And, and I walk, keep walking. I was like looking, I walk from uh, the store outside on the street and there is like line behind the corner. So I keep walking there and people go, go like crazy. And <laughs> I was like, this is unbelievable. Like, you know, I, I was expecting some people show up, but not as many. And I was like, wow, like, uh, you know, that means so much to me. Well, that's awesome. The city loves you, and I hope yeah. you get to feel that love on Sunday. Yeah, You've earned no, it, and uh, we're all excited to be there and see the banner go up. It is, uh, it's something we'll never forget. So thank you for all you've done here, and uh, good luck on Sunday. Yeah, thank you, guys. Good luck uh, not crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. That is uh, Marion Hosa. He needs no uh, introduction or outro, I guess you would call it. But yeah. uh, thanks to Bill and uh, Scott at Triumph Books for making this happen. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, if you're on the YouTube there, make sure you smash the like button. We're not done with the show yet, so uh, stick around. We've got some Blackhawks news to get to today. But first, we want to tell you about our good friends at Green Ridge Farm. They're a Chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all-natural option. They're the makers of all-natural deli meats, sausages, and their famous meat sticks. They're perfect for tailgating, happy hour, or school lunches. These all-natural meat sticks are hardwood smoke for eight hours, and with 16 grams of protein per stick, they make a perfect post-workout snack. They come in chicken, black forest beef, and flavors like jalapeno cheddar and spicy chili. If you haven't tried them yet, you don't know what you're missing. They're delicious because they're made from recipes, generations in the making, and being all natural, they deliver a fresh and flavorful alternative at snack time. You can find them in the refrigerated section at Costco, Sam's Club, or in your local Chicagoland grocery store. And right now, when you order any three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com and include a pack of meat sticks in your cart, those meat sticks will be free simply by using the code CHGO at checkout. And for joining us today, Marion Hosa takes home a case of Green Ridge Farm meat <laughs> sticks. Thank you uh, for participating, Marion. Green Ridge party, Farm, yeah. <laughs> simply natural meat. Yeah, lead off men guys used to get watches and uh, CHGO guests <laughs> get meat. Here's your case of meat. Here's your case of meat, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, game time, right? Yeah, yeah I got to collect myself. Hey, there's, right. a, there's, a, there's a big game on Sunday. There I is a big that. game on Sunday. There's multiple games on Sunday that are big. Um, but uh, the big one is going to be at the United Center, Blackhawks and Penguins. Um, uh, Marion Hosa, who is uh, now we can say friend of the show, Marion Hosa, uh, getting his number retired. If you want to get tickets to that, the best way to do that is to go through the Game Time app. Uh, 
Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sporting events, concerts, uh, shows, whatever you want to go see Game Time. Uh, they are going to get you the best price to see that show. Um, I heard there was a big musical uh, artist that had some ticketing issues yeah, in the last couple Childers. of days. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty wild. <laughs> but uh, with Game Time, you are going to get the best tickets uh, at the best prices. You ever dream of sitting at the 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate? It's possible with the Game Time app, and you're not going to find a better deal this season on Blackhawks tickets. Again, Sunday, big game. Uh, prices are very reasonable uh, to get into the door, to get a seat, and to be there uh, by 4.30, as the yes. ceremonies will start at 4.30. Game starts at uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, around that. Yeah. The important time is 4.30. 6 o'clock puck drop. I 6 o'clock, yeah. The important time is 4.30. You get, go to uh, the show description uh, here for us at the CHGO Blackhawk show. Uh, open that link, and you're going to get your game time tickets through that link, and you're going to get the best deal possible. And if you think you can find a better deal, you can't. Uh, if you think you can find a better deal, you can go to uh, Game Time and say, hey, I went to this other ticketing site. They have this price, and Game Time will match the, ticket of that, uh, the, the price of that ticket because they want to make sure that they are giving you the best deal possible. If you love CHGO, you're going to love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying tickets through the link in the description, as I just mentioned. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all of your favorite events. Sorry, I'm just basking. <laughs> I know. I'm, there, I'm there's, like, just, there's so many more uh, things I wanted to ask, but he's, he's on such a yeah. tight schedule, and mm -hmm. he really told me on the way up, I said, are you sick of doing these yet? And he said, no, but I'm losing my voice because he's <laughs> just been talking so much. So yeah. uh, thanks to Marion and thanks for uh, our friends at Triumph Books for making it happen. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, game time, getting a door for 37 bucks. 37 bucks. It's a standing room ticket, but $37 to go see a banner. You will never forget uh, that memory. So jump on that. But, That's awesome. Um, I really encourage everybody to pick up the book and read it. I have been sent dozens and dozens of sports book over the years that usually just sit and collect dust they're all very similar um but i was i read the book cover to cover yesterday and i'm not a big reader which may come as a shock to some people <laughs> um i'm just not and i could not put it down there are so many great stories um and one thing i wish we'd gotten to with him but he talks about when he was drafted by ottawa had a really good camp didn't make the team who was disappointed but said my time with the Portland Winter Hawks was so formative and so important. Mm -hmm. And as it pertains to the Hawks rebuild, you know, um, there's just so much in there. It's just such a great book. You can see I have my, I have my uh, post-it notes uh, <laughs> in the book that I, I just made a couple a, of notes. I made a ton of notes. Bye, Marion. Guys, <laughs> take care. Um, that was cool. Marion hosts this way to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but get, the book is wonderful, and any hockey fan would love it. But. He mentioned the uh, Pavel Dimitra's uh, tragic passing two days before his first daughter was born and the mixed Crazy. emotions of that and Crazy. really detailing the skin condition. There's a photo of him in the book with all the allergy tests like on his back. Mm. And he looks like a quilt. There's so many it's, squares drawn. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. It's crazy. And and you know, he he's you know, he said, you know, when he had to make the decision to, you know, retire early step away from hockey because of it he heard all of the things that yeah. people would say about all oh, you know cap circumvention and all this stuff and like to to read through what he was going through just to play hockey um i mean you, you know you talk, we, we talk about so many times about players you know playing through injuries and, and and all these things just to play hockey and how tough hockey players are like Think about every two weeks having to go get medical tests done to make sure your organs aren't failing and then being like, okay, I'm going to suit up and go yeah. play hockey. Yeah. Now, now I got a game plan about the Islanders. Yeah, cool. right. <laughs> like just just crazy what yeah. he went through and, and um, just commendable to, to say, you know what, like I, he had to think about what his life was going to be like when he was done and what, he, what it was when, while he was still playing. So it's 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 crazy to to see what he had went through, and it's great to hear that you know he's he's feeling great. Yeah. Um, he talked the other night, Wednesday before the before the game, and um, said that he's really only skated with equipment twice since he stopped playing. Um, so it's crazy to think like he he he's 
he's done it's over with hockey. Yeah. It's over. Well, yeah. and his, I'm glad to see his business ventures are taking off as, as well as they are mm-hmm. because for a lot of athletes, that's all they've done their whole life. Right, and yeah. especially when you read the book, Marion's and, and Marcel, their whole life was hockey. Their dad's a coach. They grew up in, 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 in communist Czechoslovakia and it's like all they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually really interesting in there is how he compared hockey in Slovakia when communism fell. Yeah. The opportunity to play for so many went away because under communism, every kid could play any was, sport for free. Yeah. And then that went away and it became for only for the more, uh, you know, rich families, which is why you've seen a dip in Slovakian prospects. I thought that was really interesting, but mm-hmm. the book's just chock full of great oh, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, it's not a, it's not a puff piece by any stretch of no, the imagination. No. I mean, yeah, there's, uh, there's I, so many books that are like that yeah. and this is not one. No, of it's and not, it's not an ego feeding book. It's, it's his story. It's a really great story. And you can clearly see he has uh, very little ego to no. go around. One of the most so. genuine professional athletes yeah. I've ever had the pleasure of talking to, no doubt. No ego, but uh, understands his value. Yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. I, I, he talks about it through the book where like when he was traded by Ottawa, how hurt he was. And he's like, they treated me like I was a hunk of cheese. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, I, he said, I'm, I'm no, he said in the book, I'm no Joe Schmo. I'm Marion Hosa. I deserve <laughs> to be treated better than Ottawa treated him. Right. You know, and uh, it's uh, actually, yeah. Was it the Ottawa trade or the Atlanta? Whatever. Yeah. It was Ottawa, Ottawa traded him to, to Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. I was wondering if that was a trade he was mm-hmm. upset about. And yes, it was. Um, I think many players might have been upset if they were traded to Atlanta at that time. Well, it's so funny because Ottawa, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Atlanta. He said, like in Atlanta, the refrigerator didn't have water in it. He's like, <laughs> what? Do, how do, why don't we have any water? Like that's we why we made the sure we had water, water in our refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure you, before you start a franchise, you can afford to stock the fridge with water. But as we learned, he didn't want it in the refrigerator anyway. That's yeah. True. <laughs> well, I think that yeah, it's because of his voice. But yeah, maybe he, that's where he got his love for room temperature water is uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He he asked us for some room temperature water because his voice is is just going. But I, I cannot wait for Sunday. Um, it's going to be. A special I day. have been getting emotional thinking about. <laughs> That number going up. Yeah. You know, because we have talked with, aside from Savard, I've not seen any of those guys play. Yeah. You know, and to see a guy whose entire career, I watched every game Marion Hosa played as a Blackhawk. Mm-hmm. And that is going to be really meaningful where there's a guy from my lifetime having his number up there. And yeah, there's going to be a lot more, but I meant what I said to him. There's something different. Yes, homegrown is wonderful. Right, that's yeah. why Derek Jeter is so beloved and yada yada, but the fact that he looked from—he's a guy with a lot of options when it came to free agency—and he said, "I choose Chicago." Mm-hmm. That's huge. That's, and especially when compared to how the Hawks had run for the prior seventy-five plus years right. to that happening, you know, where they didn't go out and get yeah. The big oh, fish. Is you would always lose guys because of that. Yeah. Right? Well, they would have signed Marion Hosa. They would have signed. They would have been the team that traded for his contract yeah right <laughs> after like well that, that was the thing like look we just signed paul coffee and doug gilmore like well yeah. those guys are nice hey, here's, like, Win- here's, <laughs> here's wendell clark's knee braces enjoy here's, it for a here's season Theo flurry yeah. like uh, well we did get guys like that like a guy like paul coffee was here for 10 games and said get me out of yeah here. i'm out thank you um yeah that's it was just such a shift in blackhawks hockey brian campbell was was first mm-hmm. right like obviously it was important a huge signing an important thing but brian campbell is not a hall of famer he's not a franchise well, i guess he's a franchise changer but he's not like he's not the level of player that hosa was yeah. right yeah you know um, he, had, he had he his arrival had an impact but hosa's was completely were, different yeah there were two things that that m- let you know that the blackhawks were in a special uh era of hockey it was the 2009 Winter Classic, mm-hmm. that was kind of like their yeah. arrival back. That yep. like, hey, not only the city but nationally, people care about this team again. But then that following summer, when Marion Hosa signs, it was like, and he was involved in both. Yeah, he was. <laughs> uh, but it was like, pinch me. Like, what's yeah. going on here? This is these are the like days I used to dream of as a kid. Like, hey, we're gonna get this guy. All those years of hey, we're gonna trade for Brett Hall or Keith Chuck. We're gonna get the big guy. And you're like, yeah, it never they would happened. just leverage the Hawks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, it would never happen. And then yep. you get Marion Hosa and then, you know, 
and in, in typical Chicago fashion, we had to wait, you know, a couple. We had to wait about <laughs> a month and a half into the season. We're almost at the anniversary of his uh, debut. It's coming up here in a couple of days. Uh, it was the day before Thanksgiving. He did not mention his. Well, I mean, mentioned starting playing for the Hawks, but. That debut game he had. Yeah. Well, that's one of my favorite moments of Hawks fandom. Just, I remember it was the night before Thanksgiving, yep. and going into my normal watering hole at the time. Usually, and it was a you know nine o'clock game because it was in San Jose, so that you had the. You had the night before Thanksgiving crowd, mm. so it was already crowded, but the game was on every TV, mm. and the sound was on, and everybody was watching. And when Hosa scored his first goal, the place went nuts, and it was like, wow, this is so cool yeah. that people are getting pumped up about a Blackhawks game in November. I had never seen that before. It's the anticipation, too, of, okay, they signed him in July. Then you got to wait for the season. And Four it's like, oh, later, my God, yeah. the Hawks are going to be so good this year. And then they are good. And then they add host in November, and you're like, is he going to be the same guy after the injury? And he comes out and just announces his arrival where he catches a puck in midair, drops it, and bats it out of the air into the goal. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on? How is this happening yeah. to the Blackhawks? It's almost similar to, not that he's on that level yet, but like the Justin Fields thing. Like, how is this guy a Bears quarterback? How yeah, is this right, possible? Yeah. It is such a foreign feeling. Yep. It's kind of so, like to all of us. Like, you know, f that... November 2nd, 2016, where you're like, it's surreal. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm watching the Cubs win a World Series. Yeah. This was never supposed to happen. Oh, my God, the Blackhawks got the guy, mm -hmm. and here we are, three Stanley Cups. They got just, him, and he's exactly what we thought he yep. would be Because I remember, more, and more. I remember when that yeah. injury happened, and he had to miss the first six weeks of the season. You know, of course, we're all cynical. We're all Chicago. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. We get the we get Signed this big guy injured, and he's yeah. damaged goods and he's yeah. not gonna play and blah blah blah. And then he took about eight minutes of hockey to be like, Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, that's not the case. Yeah. Uh Herb from CHGO White Sox is in the chat and says, As a casual hockey observer back when Hosa signed with the Hawks, I would watch games and say Hosa is the best player on the ice. Stayed that way for a good portion of his career here. Throughout the book. Uh, there are several people that call him a perfect hockey player. He is. Sure, guys had better stats. Guys put up bigger numbers. But in terms of the 200-foot game, the stick handling, the ability to score, the ability to pass, the ability to fend off defenders, the ability to back check, the there was really no one strength. like him. Yeah. Like, there was a story where Matt, early in his career, I think maybe his rookie year with Ottawa, he put a check on a guy against Toronto. And Matt Sundin skated up to him and said, get off the juice, Hose. <laughs> and, he, and Sundin really thought that Hose was on steroids because he had hit a guy so hard and so it had gotten so big and strong in a short time. It was the NHL workout regimen that he got hurt in Portland, blew out his ACL on a knee-to-knee -knee hit, yeah. and then went to Ottawa for rehab and then started working out with an NHL program. And then Marion Ho th this Marion Hosa was born, mm -hmm. you know, so... Anyway, we've got some Hawks news to get to today. Sure. I, and, you know, we <laughs> darn it, we didn't ask Marion about uh, Ian Mitchell getting recalled uh, from, from the Ice Hogs, and I'm going to kick myself forever for not asking yeah. his opinion. Yeah, on that. We, we, we talked that Marion Hosa was the hockey savior for so long, but now he's been replaced by uh, Ian Mitchell, <laughs> who, yeah. uh, who looks like he's going to play uh, in Boston <laughs> tomorrow. 51, 81. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Yeah. Just about, yeah. Just different positions. Yeah, um, I mean, we we had uh, talked about it after Wednesday night's game. Um, Ian Mitchell had a four-point afternoon, coinciding with Caleb Jones uh, having a minus five evening. Um, Alec Gula was sent down to the Ice Hogs, and uh, Ian Mitchell was brought up today. So it all just kind of pieces together. I, I, I think you were... Were you just looking I at the lines? I was checking while we were doing our read. Yeah, uh, it l appears that Ian Mitchell and Philip Roos will be the third pairing, and okay. Caleb Jones Caleb will Jones. get that reset. We'll watch from the from the press box. Okay. Also appears that uh, Boris Kachuk is going to be the odd man out on the forwards. Um, so so Reese Johnson Reece comes Johnson's back in. Back in. Okay. Kachuk out. Go. Low event hockey man. Yes. Well, you know, he gets replaced by another low event hockey man. Yeah, a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> but it is what it is. But, yeah, Ian Mitchell um, and Philip Roos, that could be an interesting combination. But, it will uh, be interesting. Good for Ian. You know, this was supposed to be his chance, his year. He, he had a really good shot of making the team, and mm -hmm. then he gets the wrist injury, has to miss training camp. Played three games with the Ice Hawks, did really well. So give him a shot. This is this is your chance now. Yeah. This is 
and you have to figure it out now. Yeah. You don't know 100% what you have in him at the NHL level, so let him let him put him in the lineup and keep him in the lineup for 10, 12 games and then we'll see where we're at. He's in a, he's in the last year of his contract. 23 years old, I believe he's at now. Um this is a big opportunity for him and this season was was shaping up to be a really big uh, make or break season for him. Um, played most of the year last year in Rockford and was, you know, arguably at times their top defender. And, you know, injuries can can really derail the best laid plans. And um, I'm optimistic that he, he can come back and look like a regular NHL defenseman. Like, that's the best case scenario for him. Like, we're not looking for Ian Mitchell to come in and be, you know, a top pairing guy. We're not looking for him to be Kale McCarr. He's not. He's not going to be anything like that. But if he can come into this opportunity and maybe solidify that, hey, I, I think Ian Mitchell might be better than Caleb Jones. I think Ian, Ian Mitchell might be a better option than Philip Bruce. Like, if he can play his way into a regular lineup spot, especially once Seth Jones comes back yeah. and is healthy in about two weeks-ish, um, that's the best-case scenario for him. And <laughs> and if he, if he can do that, then that can be potentially a, a small building piece moving forward. It's the perfect time for him to make, a, yeah, to make an impression because right. Seth Jones is still out for a couple more weeks. Caleb Jones mm-hmm. has played himself out of the lineup. This is your time. You're getting the shot. Take advantage of it. Absolutely. The interesting thing, thing to see will be if when Jones comes back, and let's say Mitchell does play pretty well, will he stay or will they send him to Rockford regardless? Because Jones or Mitchell? Mitchell. Mm. Because he has to give him the reason to yeah, but let's yeah. let's Force let's just hand. let's just make pretend that somehow Mitchell outperforms Caleb Jones, <laughs> yeah. which is not the biggest stretch in the world. Um, you hope not. Is there an opportunity for a young player to stay here? I think I don't so. know the answer to that question. I think he he's he's a different he's in a different position because it's not like he's Lucas Reichel, right? We've True. seen we've seen Ian Mitchell play at the NHL level uh, for an for enough to get an idea of, of what he's done before. Um, and again, he's, he's on the last year of his, uh, of his deal. It's, it's not like he's here for another few years and he's still ripening and developing and all that, all that stuff. He, he's getting to a point where, you know, we might be seeing the player that he is. And I think if he plays well enough to be in the lineup, put him in the lineup. Is, is 23-year-old Ian Mitchell much different than 25-year-old Caleb Jones? No, I don't. Th- I don't think there's a big difference there. Here's no. another factor that could go into it. If they uh, don't think that he's going to be part of a long term plan, put him out there, hope he does well, and then start making some phone calls to teams that are looking for defensemen. You know, yeah, that's true. You know, hey, we don't have spot for him in our future plans. You know, how about a fifth round pick or whatever? Sure. Or if he plays well, you can maybe deal a veteran. Sure. That too. To a team that needs yeah. help, too. So there's mm-hmm. plenty I mean, of options. Hockey's a weird sport that, you know, w- once you start thinking, oh, we got this slog at this position, hockey has a way of yeah, fixing that for you. Especially you know? when your GM has a plan. So weird. Yes. So weird. <sighs> you know what you should also plan for besides stockpiling your hockey cabinet with great players? Snow blindness. You should plan that. for that, and the best way to beat snow blindness <laughs> is wearing a pair of Shady Rays, the coolest, most affordable sunglasses on the market. Shady Rays never understood why sunglasses were so expensive, so they set out to change that, and that's exactly what they did. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses this late fall feels like winter because our friends at Shady Rays has you covered. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles catered to everyone and every lifestyle. Best part about Shady Rays is they have the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. If you lose or break your shades day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Did you drop them in a lake? Well, those lakes are going to be frozen very soon, so that might not be an issue. They might crack on the ice. Did you, uh, did you drop them and break them while wiping tears away from your eyes during the Marion Hosa <laughs> retirement ceremony? That's more likely. It doesn't matter how you break or lose them. They'll replace them. Even with that strong of a protection program, they still manage to make quality that I could tell you from being a customer for the last couple of years. They are just as good, if not better, than any of those expensive name brands on the market. 
Shady Rays also provides 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every purchase and have donated 20 million meals nationwide to date. That's so not only you're going to look cool, you're going to do something to help others as well. That's that's the this time of year, it's important. People like to do that kind of thing. Yes. They stand behind their product and they told our team if anyone has any problem, they will take the profit, throw it right out the window, and they will do what it takes to get it right. Free returns and exchanges. You either love your Shady Rays or they will pay for you to ship them back. And here's the best part. A great deal for our listeners exclusive to you because we love you. When you use your promo code CHGO at checkout, you're going to receive 50% off Two or more pairs of Shady Rays. That's buy one, get one free. The more you buy, the more you save. You yep. can get two awesome pairs of sunglasses for as low as 54 bucks. Check them out, ShadyRays.com. Guys, I'd like to chime in on the Shady Rays. Uh-oh. Uh, Uh-oh. Read here. Uh here. My friend Mark actually used our CHGO promo code yesterday. Yes. He got the buy one, get one free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a mystery pair that if oh. you add, it's... It's only nineteen dollars. You get a mystery pair, and you get free shipping at that point too. So that's what the three three pair. pairs for seventy five bucks. Seventy three. That's hard to beat. That sounds, sounds like bad. a really it's, good plan around the holidays. If you're looking to buy for get some gifts yeah. for people, knock out three gifts in one. Yeah, order. three gifts in one. Three in one. That's you got to choose which of your friends gets the mystery pair. That's right. Well, maybe yeah. the mystery pair is the coolest one, and you keep that. The mystery there pair is a the mystery box is a box. Could be anything. It could be anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And hockey fans, it is time broke. to hit the ice again. <laughs> could be and thanks to DraftKings Sportsbook, <laughs> an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you're in for the season of a lifetime. New customers can bet five dollars on any team and get two hundred dollars in free bets if they win. Only one game on the docket tonight: L.A. at Vancouver. I'm looking here at the bets. How about this? Philip Deneau, anytime goal scorer, plus 235? Sure. Kind of like that one. Especially against the Canucks. Yeah. So play that one. Plus 235 for Philip Deneau. You want to make it even more exciting, combine that bet with other bets with those same game parlays. You can bet which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more for your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code CHGO, bet $5 on any NHL team to win their game and get $200 in free bets if they do. That's code CHGO at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And speaking of CHGO, we've not mentioned this today, but yesterday we launched our new Die Hard level of our CHGO membership. Not just a Christmas movie. No. Jump in. Become a CHGO diehard. Why? With a vengeance. Well, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> Every year, you get a free T-shirt or hat. You get 20% off all CHGO merch. You get percentage off of every CHGO event, uh, stadium takeovers, tailgates. Everything we do is going to be discounted. And as we grow here, more and more of these events will be taking place. Our written content is mostly unlocked now. Mm-hmm. If you're a diehard, you're going to get access to those really special written pieces, including a rebuild report, which has a really cool logo. I don't know if you guys noticed the new logo for the rebuild report. I noticed it last yeah, night. Yeah. That, that was fun. Yeah, I, that great. was a fun little, uh, uh, little uh, nugget I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, cool. That's awesome. I would have liked to see that. But yeah. Cool. Uh, you're going to get access to our Discord page. You're going to be able to hang out and chat with us. We're going to do some live Zoom happy hours yeah. as the season goes on. So, so much value in that CHGO diehard membership, especially if you're buying merch, going to events, the thing's going to pay for itself. Yep. So become a diehard, level yeah. up your fandom, become a CHGO diehard today. I think you're also going to get an actual physical oh, yeah. membership card, card. Membership card. card. Yep. and that you can use at some of our uh, our, our partnership uh, and sponsors, uh, places to get a little little uh, partnership discount. There's, there's, a, there's a big partnership on the horizon that that membership card might, yeah. uh, might play a uh, uh, a, a serious role in um, listen this we're trying to build a community here mm-hmm. at CHGO yep. that's our main focus and while we're here on this side of the camera it's all about you guys on that side of the camera absolutely and we want to reward you for being it's about you Steven about you, not Steven. you Steven <laughs> <laughs> that side of the camera except Steven uh, no, no you're cool um, 
but seriously, you know, we want to reward you. And some people have asked, hey, I bought a membership when we first started. You guys get upgraded to diehard status. Boom. Boom. Right off the bat. As our thanks to you for being one of the OG supporters. So if you're already a member, you get the diehard status automatically as our thanks to you. Because we would go have to get regular jobs if it wasn't for you guys tuning Mm -hmm. in and reading. And I don't ever want to do that again. So thank you guys. (laughs) Like this is this, this whole CHGO thing is about the fans in the community and there is no community without you guys so yeah uh, Sh- this is our thanks to you for being you're already diehard fans so why don't you just get the cool card to prove well it? The, the great thing about this is too is it shows you that um chgo isn't just gonna rest on its laurels and this happens with dnvr and phnx yeah. as well the company's always looking for a, a way to make it a better more valuable thing for you so it's constantly being evaluated it's constantly being upgraded so Look, we, we want this community to thrive. We want it to grow. And the best way we do that is by giving you our support, the people that make CHGO happen, uh, the best value we can, right? It's not about just squeezing every dime out of you. Of course not. We want you guys to feel part of this community and we want you to have access to the things we do. Uh, so go check it out. Go to allchgo.com for all the uh, info on how to become yep. 2023 a CHGO. 2023 is going to be a huge year at CHGO. Mm-hmm. So get yep. in now. Absolutely. Hop on the ride, as they say. That's right. They do yeah, say that. As we say. A couple of smart guys coined that phrase a while ago. Many people uh, say I it. saw it. Did Marion open the uh, liquid death on his uh, chair? I, I don't think so. No, I but was, um, I, know I gr- believe he did leave something behind. Yeah, on, Lawrence. Uh, uh, hey, little, Lawrence. A little memento for well, how, uh, how much, is, the how much you selling that water bottle on eBay for? <laughs> <laughs> Come sit down for a second. <laughs> don't, D- don't, don't sit mess in the, the chair. Host chair. <laughs> Not the host chair. We're selling that chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that liquid death. He touched yeah. can we, he we did gotta, touch that. There we have is. to put that wow. on the uh, on it's, the backdrop on uh, one of our shelves. Yes. Say do not touch, do not drink. There is host of DNA in here. Yes. Send that to Kyle Davidson right now. Yeah, there you <laughs> so go. So he can clone <laughs> he six can more hoses. Yeah. 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 An entire team of hosts. The creepiest piece of merchandise that uh, has been stolen. I have a uh, I was at Bears training camp one year and RW McCorders dropped his mouthpiece and I'm like I'll take that. <laughs> so I have, I have RW, RW McCorder's mouthpiece in my basement. Did you pop it in? It's in one of those hockey puck cases. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is uh, that is worse than the water. And I by no, far. you know what? I actually do, I have worse than a, that because it's RW McCorder. My first, yeah, that's pretty bad. My first score event was uh, when the score used to do a golf outing, and I was an intern and I, I unpaid, of course, and. I was working one of the holes, and I could hear around the corner. I heard the voice of Pat Foley. Mm. Like, you know, you hear that, you know, like, and I just got nervous, right? He pulls up, and he sees me, and I'm getting sunburned. Like, hell, I got a hat on backwards, and my face is, like, red and then, like, white. He's like, you're burning up, big fella. And he gives me his copper tone blue bottle of sunscreen. There's only, like, a squirt left. He's like, just hang on to it. You need it. So I still have that bottle of uh, sunscreen <laughs> from Pat Foley. That's great. Uh, yeah, that was like my first big score moment, and it pales in comparison to today. That's fantastic. Where I rode an elevator with Marion Hosa. I said to Greg a little when I got up here, I go, I peed a little. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> so That's why the computer's on your lap. No, it was awesome. Like, he's just, he is such a normal dude uh, for yeah. someone like, like you said. Well, he's European. Oh, okay, he's a normal dude who he's, has played in the NHL for many years. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and he's European. He's got yeah. very European wardrobe. He, he, yes, and he could afford it. Yeah. yeah. And he, but yeah, just, just walking in, you know, he, he was like, wow, this is a pretty cool cool space. And, you know, was intrigued by the ping pong table. Ping pong, yeah, yeah we, we offered him some of the Malort that we had in the office. But, you know, it is a little early to start that. But uh, it, was, it was there for him if he wanted yeah. it. But he was more interested in the water. I think if Marion played ping pong, there would just be like, just putting holes in the wall <laughs> just from the powerful shot he has. Yeah. No, that was great fun. And if you jumped in late, uh, you can always come back and watch it on yep. YouTube and, of course, uh, on your favorite podcast app. Before you go, please smash that like button for us. We'd really appreciate it if you do that. Reminder, become a diehard at allchgo.com. We're back Saturday. We're back Sunday for post game. We've got a show Monday in studio. Tuesday, we're talking to Bernie Nichols. It's all happening. It's all happening, Busy. so uh, we're going to be around. Join us uh, tomorrow night and Sunday. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about the host of retirement ceremony. Maybe we can convince him to come back for another segment <laughs> uh, if he still has a voice. So 
Anyway, thanks for being here with us. Really, it means the world to see so many people uh, watching the video yeah, and shout sharing out to everybody it in and, the chat and all that stuff. We appreciate it. And days like this, you know, I mean, every day here is a vacation, but uh, days like this are just special. And this is a day I don't think the three of us will ever forget. So thanks for being here with us. We appreciate it. And thanks for listening to the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.